Hello and welcome to this edition of URP Practical Talk. As always, I'm your host, George Gonzalez, and today we are here with Dr. Vishnu Bandhu. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you, George? I'm doing great. You're good, good. Yes, and so um, I will, we'll, before we go into the rest of it, we'll speak on kind of a topical issue, something that, uh, that happened just on this past Thursday. I know we had a big blackout. Um, you know, all throughout the region. It was apparently something that was on the minds of a lot of people. It, you know, it, was, it, it, it damaged productivity. Apparently, it really struck a nerve. Well, um, this is uh, something I noticed had been happening. But this Thursday gone, it happened much more than any other time. Um, I don't know what is their problem, if they don't have fuel or what they don't have or any instrument, but it, it, it seems like a fuel problem to me because why all over West Coast, all over Georgetown, Etikubo, all over this country having such a big blackout, you know? It, 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 it damaged people's um, equipment. In fact, my equipment damaged. I had a 16-inch TV where the blackout damaged it. Who will pay for it? Nobody, you can't go and complain to nobody in this country. You know, something like this happening in the United States, the, the power company has to pay for it. You know, they can't leave it like that. But here, no. We don't have those kind of rights. So I don't know what is happening because this blackout has become so constant. And imagine that we are paying such a high electricity bill in Guyana. As I mentioned in one of the last programs, that United States... The most expensive state of electricity in New York is New York, right? Paying eight cents per kilowatt for, for electricity, right? We in Guyana paying $53 now plus watt for electricity. Sorry, actually four times of what the United States is paying. So how can we have productivity in Guyana? How can a business survive? How can you encourage manufacturing company to come here? The most important thing in any business is electricity. And you have to get cheap electricity to survive, to do a good business. This is why whatever we produce in Guyana we have people that import the same thing, selling it cheaper here than what we are selling. Because why? Because our cost is too much. Right? If you go to the store, they got to pay so much electricity bill. So they got to raise the, 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 the merchandise to meet with the, the financial status. And then they can go ahead. See? So... I don't understand. This government doesn't seem like they, they, they think. They doesn't seem to think that electricity is one of the most important things in our country. That is why the URPRC are focusing heavily also on electricity and not these expensive electricity, cheap electricity, you know. This government has been talking about going green, going this, going that. But what happened? I think it's green mean to paint all the building in green in Guyana, including the state house. That is his green. He doesn't understand what is green. Huh? Green is to take away yourself from this heavy fuel. That's what we are focusing heavily on today to build Guyana, the heavy fuel, because you want to avoid pollution to the atmosphere. And all what they're thinking about, bam, fuel, fuel, fuel. You know, the last administration, drugs were flowing. This administration, fuel are flow. But we ain't got nothing yet. You know, you got what has been happening in Guyana is very, very sad. Very sad. Where we are going today. You know? 
and we have the people has to make a change. And this is a message I want you, the audience, to listen. It's not this handful of politicians that in the parliament will make a change. You will have to make that change. Come and band yourself with the URP for a real change in Guyana. The URP is the change for Guyana. And I'm appealing to you, for God's sake, for your children, yourself, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, come aboard the URP. As we talk about the local government election also, I like to repeat this because I, we are looking for honest, sincere, and open-minded people who want to develop their community. Please get on board with the URP. Let us make a difference for this year local government election in Guyana. So we you can truly develop your community without fear, without having all these big politicians telling you how to run your life. Because many of you who are out there can do much better than these professional politicians that we are having in this country. Many of you, you may not know to read and write, but you have something here that they don't have. And I want you to don't put yourself down. Each and every one of us, from the grass cut cutter to the lawyer and the doctor, we all have a role to play in Guyana. Don't make anyone put you down. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I know especially for um, well, bring you know bringing it back to green energy that uh, so we we propose oil you know that we're currently using yeah. oil you know that this seems to be our me main means of power production but clearly that's not green energy. Uh, what are some of the suggestions the URP has in terms of really like dealing with this blackout situation? Well, the blackout situation we are focusing on we are talking seriously over the hydro, the hydro fall. We have many falls in this country, you know. Even in, in, in Barnum days, he had identified many, many falls to do hydro in Guyana, you know. But nothing has materialized from what they, what they thought because nobody followed up that. Everybody coming, they want to do new things. They do not want to do things that the last government identified because they feel the last government will get credit for that. What the heck if we get credit for that? Are we, do we want to, to, to build our country or what do we want to build? Look, many things that, that we have been seeing on URP platform. For instance, uh, when we open our office in, in, in Linden, we talked about um, if we have oil here, we should not have oil, oil refineries in the next country. We should be able to have oil refinery right here in Guyana because of the waste product, the asphalt, and all these things that the oil produce, we will use it to develop our country, make roads, make this, you know, and do, do all kinds of things, gas, natural gas, and all these things. But, and we talk about, about um, setting up the oil um, refinery in Linden. Recently I heard, now this government are talking about things, and somebody bring it to my attention. Doc, you know, you guys talk about this and, 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 and the government talking about it now? I said, that's fine. If we talking about things and they can see it, it makes sense, and they can follow on it and give, take the ideas and go with it, fine. That's what we want for Guyana. Because we want to develop Guyana. You know, it must be done. It doesn't matter who do it. If the PPP do it, or the PNC do it, or who do it. As long as Guyana is going forward, and our people will be able to see progress in Guyana. That is all what we are talking about. So whatever they, we are doing, or whatever we print, or whatever we talk, and the government can copy some of it, we are proud. We are happy. You know? We are happy because they win and we win too. Because it's our ideas. See, winning is not sitting as a president, as I always said. 
Winning is when you have something here. You have a vision. And you can able to, 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 to portray the thing that you have in you. Or if you can do it, and I can do it, both of us won. Yeah. And that's what winning is all about. Right? But these guys look at winning, you must be president. You must be prime minister. You must control this parliament. That is their winning. But my winning is not that winning. My winning, as long as you, the people, are happy, I am happy. I don't have to be a president to be happy. Right? So for you, winning is not power, it's progress. Progress, yes. Mm. Winning is progress. It's not power. It's your idea, putting to work, to get things happen, to get things done. That's what winning is all about. But for these two major political parties, winning is power, right? You see how they're blasting one another in the parliament? Eh? Like little children disgraceful, eh? blaming tables, using words what they're not supposed to use. And if you are the parent of this nation and you do these kind of things, then what you are telling the children of this nation to do? Hmm? Yeah. What are you telling them to do? Encouraging that. Eh? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we are not going forward. We are going backward all the time. You know? The British leave us with certain things. And we stuck with those certain things in this country. There's no other new development. Eh? Sugar and rice is the British thing. It, and that's the two most important. And we stuck with it. Yeah. Huh? We are not going forward. All what they do. Thinking about closing down industry, closing down estate, right? You know, the PPP, in their time, they put some of these estates on, on the closing list. These guys come and implement it, you know, and the PPP try to pull themselves out easy. We don't know nothing about that. You see the close your estate, you know, and they are the one who had it on the list to close. So they are right. actually like distancing themselves yes. from something that yes. they plan. And the stupid people are thinking, look, Bharat made a statement the other day. If he win, win the next election, he will give all these sugar worker money until they get a job. What a crazy thing you ever hear like that yet. Eh? These people are working and hard to get a pay from the government. And you go feed them. You know, see who believe that they are stupid? Yeah. Huh? And, and it almost seems insulting huh? because it's just this handout, handout mentality. Yes, that yes, it's, it's insulting. Mm -hmm. Directly it's insulting. Mm -hmm. You know? But some of these, these sugar workers, you know, I don't know how they think. They only think about putting a cane bundle on their head. Nothing else. They are not thinking. You know? And I, I want to even go on that same note that, um, you know, I myself would have spoken of a lot of the sugar workers. And I know that uh, one big complaint they, they feel is that, you know, you shut down the industry, but you don't give them any sort of education to even go and well, start their own farm or to go and start whatever sort of other, uh, you know, industry that they'd like to move into. Definitely, because you're not, you're not finding no alternative for them. No. There's no alternative, right? You close down, you should try with yourself. It's just like they promised the rice farmer before the election, $9,000 bag party, right? When they got in power, the president come out clearly and he said, ah, my, that's a private industry. Rice farmer should seek their own market. And the rice miller, they must work together. You telling the rice farmer to work with the rice miller when most of these rice miller screwing the rice farmer, taking advantages on them. You are telling them that's how little these guys know about what's happening in this country. And then one right? has to ask is that if the rice millers are private industries, they're the ones who are supposed to do it, then what is the point of the GRDB or even the Ministry of Agriculture in that regard? It's to, it's to fraud the people. That's all. Frauding the people in Guyana. That is why you are here saying, look, hey, we should not sell bulk. 
party or right from this country. Let us encourage our millers to put down a little packaging plan in their factories and package our rice so that we can be able to supply and we will get value added to that. We can be able to sell it to the whole Caribbean, also the part of North America, you know, or Europe, and we will get better price for our, uh, our, our, our product. And we create more job at the same time, right? See, this government doesn't understand. Like they said again the other day, that their job is not to create job. What a dumb set of people. Huh? I never heard that. I travel actually this world. I never heard a government said their job is not to create job for the people in Guyana. When they promise the people before the election, young people, all of you will have jobs. Now they pull out themselves from that. You know, now any country in the world, United States, I live more than half of my life there. United States government will encourage all businesses to go on doing business and do more business by giving them whatever facilities they got to give them. Because they know more the business grow, more employment opens. Right? But this government doesn't understand that. They don't understand nothing. Look, that is why I'm saying, if you, had, you haven't got money, you don't know about money. You never had power, you don't know about power. So when you get in this seat, you know, you get power drunk, you lost in money, all what you're thinking about, seeing all this money that comes in this country, as soon as it comes, I try to put as much as I can put in my back pocket. That is why all the projects, they create all projects. They must create park, they must create this, they're creating that, you know. Think what is not necessary now they are building. What is necessary is at the back burner. Like the farmers, many places in this country, the farmer doesn't have proper route to bring out their, their, their paddies. Right? Instead of using the money to build the road, for the farmer to bring out their produce, you're using it in park where cow and donkeys and horse living in. This is what's happening in Guyana, right? Recently, we, we, we built about four uh, walkover, skyover, walkover on the East Bank. Millions of dollars spent. Check how many people cross on that. Eh? Those money could be well spent somewhere else. What needed in there. So you see clearly that these guys does not know what they're doing in Guyana. So it sounds like you're saying essentially it's more of uh, putting almost like the cart before the, the horse, horse right there. Definitely. Like you're beautifying but not you know really yeah. rehabilitating no. like a lot of the structural damage no. that's happened. No. Mm. So there, there's a lot of things the government you know are doing which is not necessary for them to do right now, you know? And I think they're only waiting on their time. They feel they got a couple of years more, let them fill the pocket with whatever they can fill the pocket before they get out of there. Because they can remain in government. You know? People are getting wiser and wiser in this country every day, right? This is not the 50s, 60s, and 70s, right? This is the 20th century, right? It's a new blood, new generation. And that's why we are focusing so much on the young generation. We are telling the young generation, hey, wake up, man. Wake up. Because you are the future of tomorrow. Wake up. You know, it's time for you to wake up. You know, smell the coffee. Yeah. See? And that is why the United Republican Party also have the Republican Youth Wing. We call it the Republican Youth Wing. How's that going, by the way? Right? That is going very well. Um, we have groups in Barbies. We have groups in Eskimo, Linden. 
you know. Um, we are trying to train the youth, you know, how to stand on their feet, what and what they should do. Not only to go play ball and play this and play that and play games, but how to do managing, how to manage things, you know. That is what the URP are, are, are doing, you know, so that they can able to stand in their food. They can now able to be leaders of tomorrow, you know. We are trying to let them work with the most experienced people we have so that they can learn from that. They have a chance to learn something, you know. So you can't say, this guy doesn't have experience. We have to teach them that way, how to go about it. So you're going beyond just giving, like, the children a, something to do after school. This is actual, like, skills training, actual, like, development for them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We, we are having meetings with them. We are talking to them. We are, you know, discussing, you know, that they must learn to be proud kids. You know, don't depend on no one. You know, as the saying goes, if you have, if you get, have a fish or someone give you a fish, you'll have a meal. But if I teach you to fish, then surely you can feed yourself and your family. Yeah, right? exactly. So that is what the URP is all about, trying to teach people what to do, how to go about doing things. You know, we may not know everything, but with you and I, we'll get to know everything. You know? I don't know everything. Any leader come and tell you they know it all, tell them walk. Because they don't know what they're talking. That is why they said, a man is never too old to learn. You right know? You learn all the time. You can learn from a little baby that just born. Just observe the baby, how he turn, how he swing, how he do this. You learn all the time. You know? Listen to people. Listen, and then you will be able to learn. If you don't listen, you would not learn. You know? So the URP are trying its best, doing a lot of things. A lot of things. Although we are not in government, we are going overseas, we are encouraging people about Guyana, but nobody, they would love to come in Guyana, but nobody would want to come in at this time or the past government, even if the past government did this. Nobody. If they, your own people, your own Guyanese, will not come home in Guyana, although they're longing to come home under this two regime. They're telling you clear. Uh-uh. I am going to waste my money there and waste my time under these guys because they're ready yet for Guyana. And so um, I want to bring this back a little bit towards the agriculture that, uh, that of course, one of the big things we, that you've mentioned that we should do is going against value-added products and uh, finding that new market. But, of course, that requires a certain level of marketing or marketing knowledge or experience. That, that we, we, George, we Guyanese, the diaspora, actually, we can do anything we want to do. We have all the capable people to do these kind of things. Setting up an international marketing system, what the URP talking about, it's very, very easy. It's a very simple thing to do that. Right? We have all the personnel who can do these kind of things. Right? They don't have anything, even our, our oil rig, what they're talking about here, we have Guyanese overseas can do those kind of things. In all field, Guyanese had made themselves so progressive. They studied from the top to the bottom. You will find Guyanese in the offices in the United States from top to bottom. Canada, top to bottom. Great Britain, top to bottom. We have Guyanese. We are very talented people. Of course, the brain drain happened in Guyana because of these two governments. Because where the educated Guyanese feel 
that there no future here. Why would I waste my time here? Pack my trap and I gone. And that's how they feel. But I want to say one thing. That packing your trap, those of you who, lay, who lives here, a lot of businesses right now are talking about selling out and close down. I'm appealing to you. Don't sell out. Don't close down. Guyana has a far way to go under the URP. Please, don't make that mistake. Because I want to refer to Venezuela. A few years back, I was here and I met with some people who, living in Venezuela, had their property here. And they said, you know what? I come here to sell out my property. I said, why are you selling? They said, man, I finished like this from Guyana, you know. Today, they sold their property. They went back. They think they're rich in, in Venezuela. And we have 250,000 of Guyanese was living in Venezuela. They don't have enough boat to bring them home now. Many of the Guyanese in Venezuela, family who said they're rich, had to send money for them to come back home here and leaving their property, leaving everything in Venezuela. So when you think that you are in a country and you don't care about your country, you are very, very wrong. And when you sell your property from your country, it's like you have no country. You have no country when you sell your property. So all these people in the United States and so forth who are living there and think they are high almighty, these Guyanese, let a bam fall in the United States tomorrow. Because a lot of countries have their eyes on the United States by dabbling in everybody's business. Mm. Let something like that happen and you have Guyanese survive. You know the first place they will run to? Home. Guyana is their home. Mm. But right now things are like it's not their home. Similar thing happened with Venezuela. Let us take a little example of that. You know, what is happening. So don't think that the United States can't fall. Hmm? Great Britain was a superpower in the world. It fell. Then the United States. The United States would not be the superpower in the world forever. Somebody else will take over. You know? So let us examine ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. Where are we going? Right? And that is why the URP are working so hard. We are working seriously to make a difference in Guyana. We must make a difference. We have to make that difference. But we can't make this difference without you join with us to make that difference, to make a better Guyana. Make a, a, a better place for yourself, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren to come. Be good. Think about it hard. Think about be a part of the local government in your area. Be a part of the URP team so that we can able to develop each community in Antong in this country. I thank you and may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. And so, uh, thank you, thank you again. And that's some good words to leave us yeah. on, Dr. Yeah. Bandu. Thank you. Yeah. And so, this brings us to the close of another edition of URP Practical Talk. Again, I'm your host, George Gonzalez, thanking you for watching us. And as always, we'd like to encourage you to find us on Facebook, URP Guyana. And you can also go to the website, www.urpguyana.com. And again, thanks for watching. Have a good one.